Well, welcome back to this, the last live session in CMC 2020 online. I'm still Sue Not, Chair of the CMC Advisory Committee, and I hope you've enjoyed this week as much as I have. Okay, it's not quite the same as being in Sheffield. I've missed seeing people and being able to chat to people face to face. But for me, there have been one or two pluses. For one thing, I got to see all the content. I didn't have to make difficult decisions about which sessions to attend. And then some of the sessions actually felt more intimate, as if the speakers were speaking to me personally. I know I wasn't the only one, for example, who really enjoyed being in Cressida Cowell's writing shed and seeing all her wonderful illustrations close up. In a moment, we'll be hearing from Miss Jackie and John Kelly from Grey Eye, UK's flagship disabled lead theatre company, who have put together some thoughts on what we should take away. But first, the thanks. Thank you to our patron sponsors who stuck with us through these difficult times, back the webinar season, all of which is available on our YouTube channel, incidentally, and the whole of this conference. They're on screen now. Akamar Films, Azumi, BBC Children's, CITV, Daryl McQueen, NBC Universal, The Elf Factory and Zodiac Kids. And we're no less grateful to all of the sponsors who have supported key sessions, keynotes, speed meetings and so on throughout the event. This session also has a sponsor, Disney Channel. So that completes the set and we're incredibly grateful to Disney Channel for their support. There are so many people to thank for getting, all, getting us all to this point, which frankly seemed unlikely back in March when the CMC Advisory Committee first encouraged the theme to take it on. They wanted to keep the community spirit alive despite lockdown and anything else that might hit us. And I think we can agree CMC has managed to do that. So thanks to the committee and thanks to CMC's core team, Jackie, Lauren, Kathy and Greg for driving it through. Huge, huge thanks to the tech and delivery teams, Matt, Darren, Joe, Lorna, Claire, all the people at the Sound of Music who run the platform we're on. Your skill has been formidable. Your calm and patience, both necessary and reassuring. Thanks to Justine for producing the Skill Builder Workshop and to Diane Quinn, Helen McAleer, Sarah Baines and the International Exchange team. The sessions, the change makers, the social events and all of the on-demand videos are once again the work of dozens of volunteer producers and executive producers far too numerous to name. But we're so grateful for all their contributions. And last, but by no means least, we're grateful to you for being here in huge numbers, supporting, questioning, chatting, and missing your time in the showroom bar. I started the conference on Monday by saying that there were around 750 delegates present. We've ended up with nearly 1,998 to be precise. Thank you for your loyalty and your enthusiasm. The community is alive. We can see it all here. Times are hard and probably going to be harder, but CMC will do everything we can to keep our industry alive, alert and punching above our weight as usual. The need for change is clear and we hope this conference has taken greater steps than ever before to help the movement towards fairness and inclusion. You can tell us whether that's the case. Remember, all of the content, all the webinars and all 50 videos will still be here for you to watch on catch up right through to the 30th of September. So, as we move to the last word and a performance that we hope will challenge us all and help us reflect on what we've been discussing this week, we're going to open back chat now so you'll be able to use it throughout the performance and for the usual 30 minutes afterwards. Just click on the bubble icon at the top right of your screen when it appears. We want you to have the opportunity to express your thoughts, to discuss and reflect. So, to provoke that, in the final minutes of CMC 2020, let's hear why all of this matters from Miss Jackie and John Kelly 
of Grey Eye Theatre Company with What's Next. Hey, hey. hello hey. everyone out there. It's just great to be here. Thank you so much for having us uh, in your living room or in your kitchen or wherever you've chosen to put us. It's just lovely to be here. Uh, my name's John Kelly and he's my colleague and friend, Miss Jackie, who will introduce herself in a minute. Um, I've worked with Grey Eye for the last 10 or 11 years now as a, an actor and a musician, but my background was in youth work. I've worked with young disabled people and non-disabled people for the last 30 years. So I know inclusion works. I've experienced it and I love it and it enriches everything I do in my life. And for the last 11 years, I've been lucky enough to be a professional artist performing and playing music and also doing that, engaging with young, disabled and non-disabled people. Audio description time. I am a white Irish male, brown hair with a kiss curl dropping down the front. I've got blue eyes. I've got little bendy arms, which are holding my guitar which has been created just for me. I've got a black shirt on, short sleeves with a little bit of red on it. I've got my studded belt holding me into my chair. If you hear any clunks and clicks, that's me just moving around in my electric wheelchair. My studio is all behind me here, and I don't know how half of it works, as you will probably find out. Today joining us, we've got a BSL interpreter, Rabira, and also our deaf uh, in, uh, translator, Ahmed. So that's a little bit about the team. I'm going to hand over to you, Jackie. Oh, thank you, John. Uh, yeah, so I am Miss Jackie. Um, I'm a black woman with giant Afro hair up in a giant puff with a little dangly fringe. I'm currently wearing my giant headphones and I'm in a bright red T-shirt. Um, so I'm Miss Jackie. I am a spoken word artist and a musician. I have been doing it longer than I'd care to remember. Um, I uh, love being creative. I've been a part of Grey Eye for many, many years, and I love the fact that they support work and they really, truly do think about uh, representation and diversity in such a bigger way. Um, so yeah, where me and John, we're going to do a couple of a few songs for you guys today, and. Um, all uh they will all be interpreted except for the last song unfortunately but they will be we will make sure that they are captioned later on when the when it's streamed so um the first song that i am going to do is called uh freedom and i wrote this song uh in particular about the struggles that i've faced personally as a black woman with a disability i um know that it's important to do intersectionality especially in the arts and um, this song is kind of just to remind us that sometimes you have to go against the grain to make a difference so um, yeah let's get straight into it this is called freedom working hard under someone who doesn't even know your name. We need to believe in our own ability to make change. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Rebellion is doing what you 
you want. Even if it means you might shift people comfort out of zone. their comfort zone. Who knows? You might move yourself. I have had to rebel mainly out of necessity, forced to look at life from a different perspective because the world likes to remind me that it is not designed for my blackness, for my womanhood, for my disability, but partly because it is built into our DNA. My ancestors' ancestors knew the rebelling came with consequences. I rebel frequently knowing that being free is worth the consequences, like standing too close to the sun, at least for a moment. I felt its warmth. I believe in a dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Exist on your own terms. If you are going to be a rebel, then do it with a purpose. We yearn for freedom. As soon as we are placed in a box, we want to break out. Not knowing that we have been combined to a system that likes to show us what colouring in the lines look like. We need to learn to liberate ourselves like dandelions with just enough of a breeze. I know that I need to be free. There's a way, rebellion, before freedom. There's a way, rebellion, before freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. There's always rebellion before freedom. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, John, how do you feel about freedom? Oh, that was awesome. That was running down the hairs on the back of my neck when you were doing that was just yeah that was a, a moment thank you jackie like uh the way we've developed this afternoon was just like responding to each other in song both me and uh miss jackie love music um and and when i heard so jackie shared that song with me and i shared some of my songs and we've kind of had a conversation and responded to each other and that's how we've chosen the songs this afternoon and um, the song we finish with, if it can't be right, it must be wrong, was our starting point. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for me, Freedom, when I heard that song, it took me back to my, my childhood as a, as a young disabled uh, boy, not, not really understanding why I was being treated differently. Um, kind of wanting the same freedoms as all my friends who I had around me. And I was really lucky that I had my mum and dad and I had some really good people around me, you know, saying, go for it, go for it. You are, you, you are, you're, you're equal. Um, but I experienced a, a segregated education where I went to a special school. Um, and that was difficult because I felt different. And it was really hard because I found that I, 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 I didn't have any musicians to identify with for quite a while. And I didn't see me in stories and in books. And I didn't see me on television. And I didn't see people who I could identify with and represent uh, my kind of lived experience. So freedom for me was all about that kind of, not really knowing what freedom was, was a ch as a child, but desperately knowing that I wanted to, to have freedom. And um, it reminded me of the here and now and how Right now we're in lockdown and our freedom has been taken away for, for, for really important reasons. But I then realized that my whole life I've sort of uh, fought against isolation and being protected. I've never seen myself or been told that I was vulnerable um, only by society. And I don't see vulnerability in that sense. The only time I feel vulnerable is when the systems and structures make me so or accessibility gets in my way. And then I, you know, that makes me vulnerable. So I kind of rejected those kind of ideas and I found punk and rock and roll and music. And then I heard about a protest where there were going to be disabled people who were kind of proud of themselves. And I thought, whoa, this is something new for me. And I remember it was 25 years ago, can you believe? And that was when the Disability Discrimination Act came about 25 years ago this year. And um, 
I wrote this song about my experience of um, being on that protest. And uh, I want you all to sing along wherever you are, wherever you're tuning in. This is called um, Battle of Whitehall, and I hope you really enjoy it because this is the song that, for me, was when I found freedom. <laughs> You gotta chain yourself to the buses Show them what the fuss is Get us on the political map They can try and talk us down We'll head right in the town We won't take any more of your crap there's a battle in white, oh, 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 anger in our sights. There's a battle in white, oh, 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 fighting for our civil rights, civil disobedience, public for our audience. We ain't no freak show anymore. But we're vocal and we're loud. The disabled and we're proud No sympathy but empathy Give to the cause There's a battle in white oh, 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 And you're in our sights Hope you're singing There's a battle in white oh, 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 Fighting for our civil rights Have you ever thought Apartheid was wrong? Have you ever thought homophobia was wrong? Have you ever thought that sexism, racism, fascism was ever so wrong? So is this Lady Olga Maitland, who proves she's not on this land. Perhaps segregation ain't so bad after all, that's a joke. Sniff, he has gone. Well, maybe this could be his song. As the battle cry, the civil rights will never die. There's a battle in white, oh, 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 anger in our sight. There's a battle in white, oh, we're fighting for our civil rights. What do you think, Miss Jackie? Yeah. Civil rights. I just want to let like, rock and roll. I feel like we need to be in the same room. So, you know, I can just like jump on things and break things and, you know, have a good old rocking time. <laughs> Um, that was amazing. Um, so the next um, uh, piece that uh, I'm going to do is in response to one of John's songs called um, If It Can't Be Right Then It Must Be Wrong. And um, when I heard this song it really resonated with me because it made me think about like everything that's going on in the world politically, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement and also with like how the world treats disabled people and how that there are so many of us but we always seem to struggle with representation especially in the creative industries and i think it's time that you know we make a difference so this is um if it can't be right then it must be wrong and this is my response to john kelly's original piece <clears throat> if it can't be right then it must be wrong. It's funny that people in charge love to make decisions for people that they don't represent. It's funny that these same people will tell us to work and be independent, then turn around and tell us that we are too independent for them to offer us any support. They say that we are uneducated while they triple costs and cut funding simultaneously. They say that we don't deserve the same rights as anyone else because they are too lazy to recognize that we are valuable members of society. They have no idea that we have been forced to adapt our whole lives. See, we come from communities that know how to stretch pennies into three course meals, know how to repurpose things that others will call trash and turn them into true treasures 
know how to think outside of these gates that they try to confine us in. We know that there is more to life than whatever stereotype they try to force upon us. We are not monolithic, not even close. We are as unique as the stars in the sky. We all have a little twinkle in our eye. If it can't be right, it must be wrong. I know that, you know that, we all know it's true. If it can't be right, then it must be wrong. If it can't be right, then it must be wrong. What's going to happen when the benefit's gone? Let's get things straight. Face the facts, independence, allowance, and the bedroom tax. Need some help and the door slams shut kicked in the dogs with scathing cuts heads can't be buried in red tape sand could all be done and dusted with a simple plan keep it in the frame keep the pressure up keep the fun flowing or from a loving cup we were better off last century over 40 years ago when expectations rode so high and people had more soul if it can't be right then it must be wrong What's going to happen when our rights have gone? If it can't be wrong, then it must be right. Let's stick together and keep it tight. If it can't be wrong, then it must be right. I'm mighty gay with this awful plight. Hard enough already if you don't know how to juggle it. It'd be much better if we didn't have to struggle. Shut up the system, fix it quick. Cut the middle management and empty rhetoric. Don't patronise the vulnerable and add to their stress. Independent living and many in HS. Keep it in the frame. Keep some dignity. Keep the message simple. And seek some parity. We were better off last century, over 40 years ago. When expectations rode so high, people had more soul. If it can't be right, then it must be wrong. Can't be right, then it must be wrong. La 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 la, 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 la la la. La, 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 la. So let's not dwell on idle chatter Plow more money into things that matter Think before you act, don't bring us to our knees Free us from the shackles, this credit squeeze Can't all swim in a pool of bees and honey That's stating facts, not trying to be funny Dump the silly forms and demeaning questionnaires Place you with feeling and loving tender care Keep it in the frame Keep the pressure up Keep the fun flowing Out from a loving cup Let's plot a better future, all free from fiscal strife And open up the floodgates to an independent life If it can't be right, then it must be wrong What's going to happen when our rights have gone? If it can't be wrong, then it must be right Let's stick together and keep it tight if it can't be wrong, then it must be wrong. What's going to happen when our rights have gone? If it can't be wrong, then it must be right. Let's stick together and keep it tight. If it can't be wrong, then it must be right. If it can't be right, then it must be wrong. Aye! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, in conclusion to that song, we've got a role to inflame young people to experience freedom. And for me, freedom is about inclusion. It's about understanding, understanding difference and diversity and our beauty, and that we don't fit in a box. It's not about us fitting in to a non-disabled person's world, but being who we are and being everywhere. Inclusion is about contributing. We are part of everything and we can lead too. Inclusion is about being valued. That's when inclusion comes alive. It's a reality. I know it because, works because I see it in my world every day. If we as disabled people are missing in songs, if we're missing on stage and in stories, then children are missing out on the full spectrum 
spectrum of our rainbow of inclusion to which we look towards. This is no longer a debate for us, but this is a call to action. This is a call for change. And we need active allyship to support that change. It's about our intersectionality. And as a movement, we strive for equality. United, not divided and not segregated. We are stronger when we are together. Thank you so much. Jackie, last word. Thank you so much for having uh, me. Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, thank you so, so much for having us. Thank you for being a part of our digital space inclusion concert. Um, it's been amazing. I agree with everything that John said about inclusion and representation, especially for young people. Um, I was a young person once. I know it's really hard to believe. Um, and not being able to see someone who looks like me uh, really did take a long time for me to understand that I could get into a career that I wanted to. And I think it's important, especially for everyone that's watching, if you work with children and uh, just to let them know that representation is important and they can get into whatever career that they want to. And yeah, if I can do it and John can do it, there's a space for everyone. So yeah, thank oh, yeah. you so much for having us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>